This is how the moon will look in the sky above Japan on the evening of International Observe the Moon Night, October 16th, 2021, at 11 p.m. There will be many fascinating features to observe. First, notice that there are light areas and dark areas. Looking more closely, we see that the light areas are higher and rougher terrain. The land in these areas is older and is scarred by many impact craters where asteroids have crashed into the moon. The dark areas are lower, flatter, and smoother. These plains of hardened lava are younger and have fewer impact craters across their surfaces. On International Observe the Moon Night this year, we will be able to see all six locations where humans have walked on the moon. Apollo 11 landed astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon on July 20th, 1969. Their destination was Mare Tranquillitatis. This site for the first human landing on the moon was chosen because it was considered to be a smooth, flat, safe place to land. However, the Lunar Module's flight computer brought the astronauts down toward a large crater surrounded by large, dangerous boulders. Armstrong took manual control of the spacecraft and, with only a few seconds of fuel remaining, landed it safely to the west, just past a small crater. In this view from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, you can see the descent stage of the Lunar Module some of the scientific instruments they deployed on the lunar surface, and even the dark lines of the astronauts' footprints. On November 19, 1969, the Apollo 12 mission with Alan Bean and Pete Conrad landed in Oceanus Procellarum, the largest of the moon's lava plains. Their landing site was in an area of pulverized rock that had been ejected from the crater Copernicus 385 kilometers to the northeast. Flight controllers wanted to demonstrate a pinpoint landing, putting the lunar module down right next to the earlier robotic Surveyor 3 probe that had landed in the same area in March 1967. They brought back pieces of Surveyor 3 to study the effects of years of exposure to the lunar environment. Apollo 14 landed Alan Shepard and Edgar Mitchell on the moon on February 5, 1971. The target for this mission was the Fra Mauro area, known for a very specific geological formation. Unlike the flat, smooth Mare terrain, of the previous two missions landing sites. The Fra Moro region is characterized by numerous rolling hills formed by massive amounts of rock debris blasted out by the giant impact that formed the Imbrium Basin. Apollo 15 astronauts David Scott and James Irwin landed in Mare Imbrium on July 30, 1971. The landing site was chosen on the inside edge of the Imbrium Basin. Near the landing site, the basin rim takes the form of the Apennine Mountains, rising as tall as the Alps here on Earth. Running along the base of the mountains in this area is Hadley Rill, a great channel carved by flowing lava erupted from vents on the right in this view. It is about 130 kilometers long and 370 meters deep. The astronauts on this and following Apollo moon missions brought with them a two-seated, battery-powered, four-wheeled rover, allowing them to cover greater distances. Their journeys took them along the edge of Hadley Rill and up the lower slopes of Mount Hadley Delta. On April 21, 1972, Apollo 16 astronauts John Young 
and Charles Duke landed in the Descartes Highlands. This was the first time humans had visited and sampled the rugged surface of the lunar highlands. The samples they returned showed that the highland crust is composed of ancient material over four billion years old. The final Apollo mission to the moon, Apollo 17, landed Eugene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt on the moon on December 11, 1972. Their destination was the Taurus Litro Valley on the eastern edge of the Sea of Serenity. The floor of the valley was a bay of solidified Sea of Serenity lava, but the walls of the valley were formed by lighter colored ancient lunar highland material. The approach to Taurus Litro was spectacular, with the valley being deeper than the Grand Canyon here on Earth. Great landslides had crashed down South Massif Mountain in the past, leaving lighter colored debris stretching almost six kilometers out across the valley floor. From their landing site on the valley floor, they looked up at the slopes of North Massif Mountain and saw the paths of great boulders that had tumbled down the slope. They visited and sampled sites throughout the valley. Humans are planning to return to the moon in the next few years. Our destination will be the moon's south pole. International Observe the Moon Night will be an excellent time to examine this fascinating area. There are many beautiful and amazing features you can explore on the moon using a telescope. On International Observe the Moon Night, we are highlighting a few of these locations that are well positioned for viewers in Japan. Sinus Eridum, the Bay of Rainbows, is a bay along the northwest edge of Mare Imbrium. This 260 kilometer wide crater's floor was flooded with lava along with the Imbrium Basin. Its north and west rim forms the Jura Mountains. Copernicus is a magnificent 93-kilometer diameter crater with terraced walls, a flat floor, and a group of central peaks towering 1,200 meters above the floor. The crater is over 3,700 meters deep. Flying north from Copernicus, we see the peaks of the mountain range Montes Carpatus. The range forms the southern shore of Mare Imbrium. It is about 400 kilometers long, and its mountains rise over two kilometers above the surrounding plains. On International Observe the Moon Night 2021, the peaks of the mountain range Montes Rafaeus will shine in the sunlight of the lunar morning. The range stands between the plains of Mare Cognitum to the southeast and Oceanus Procellarum to the northwest. Montes Rafaeus is 189 kilometers long and its mountains rise over one kilometer high. With bright rays of ejected, pulverized rock spreading out from it across much of the moon, Tycho is a relatively young crater, only about 108 million years old. The crater measures 86 kilometers across and 4.8 kilometers deep. The crater's central peak rises 1,600 meters above the crater floor. 
Enjoy these sights and more on International Observe the Moon Night. Lunar flyover video sequences in this movie were made with NASA's MoonTrek portal using Kaguya and Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter data. Conduct your own exploration of the moon with MoonTrek. <laughs>